What's good guys, it is Trav here from Neighbourhood. Are you using HubSpot's default ticket pipeline but aren't finding it reflects your service processes? Well, you might need to think about customizing your ticket pipelines and statuses right inside HubSpot. So today, we're gonna go over how to create a custom pipeline and how to automate ticket statuses and actions. Now, if you wanna take today's lesson offline, we'll include a free downloadable PDF in the description below. All right, let's get stuck into setting up a pipeline and the statuses and all of the stages. We'll do a sprinkle of automation there for you as well. But if you need any more information, we are in the comments below. So you can ask as many questions as you want and we will answer them for you. So uh, when you want to go through and get your tickets uh, pipeline set up, uh, what you want to try and do is go up to the top here. We want to go to edit pipelines. Uh, you might need one, you might need several. In this instance, we're just going to set up a nice fresh one here. So at the very top, we can sort of see in the settings area here, that we've got the support pipeline. I'm just going to do a create pipeline, which is going to be a new one. So this is going to be a HubSpot how to uh, test uh, support pipeline and click on create. So, all right, a few things to get started here. So each of the stages that we see as we step through one by one should be progressive as they go through. So it should naturally form a uh, new inquiry all the way to sort of, I guess, uh, uh, closed. Uh, in this instance, it comes out of the box with new, awaiting contact, awaiting on us and closed. That being said, the ticket can still bounce around back and forth, back and forth if it is on someone or on somebody else. Also with that as well, we can create some automation so it automatically moves itself as well. So I'll show you how to do that just shortly. Also, the second area here is open or closed. So uh, that will help us with reporting standpoints as well. We could also do automations based on the open or closed uh, status of that one as well. And on the right hand side, we've got the update status properties. What are these and what do they mean? As a ticket stands and goes through the process, there's certain information that we need to collect about that, uh, the, the support ticket that they have that naturally uh, needs to happen as it progresses through. Uh, and it's completely different for all different types of businesses. As the ticket goes and moves through on awaiting contact or awaiting on us, there might be some internal properties that you might want to update. So for example, maybe the ticket needs to be given to a certain internal person to help rectify that situation. Or then you might need to collect some information about payments or anything of that matter. This is where uh, updating the status properties is gonna be beneficial so that when you move the actual deal card, or sorry, not the deal card, the ticket card, this is much like the deal card, as you move the ticket card across to the next stage, we can have a pop-up show to enter that specific information. We can also make it required so that if it, that information isn't actually entered into, when the ticket card moves from one stage to the other, it won't move it unless it has that specific information. Now, the property could be just a free text open, it could be a drop down select, it could be a tick box, any of that matter. So think about how you could use that within your organization to help you gather that information to one, report on, but also to help collect that necessary information internally. How do we do it? All we do is we go through and we hover over the top with the edit properties area. And you can sit, see here, and this, these are all of the current properties that we've seen in here. So we might wanna go uh, maybe a category, the priority. Uh, we might wanna update a ticket description and we might wanna give it a ticket owner. The right hand side here will be required, means that that ticket won't move to the next stage unless information has been entered into that property. Very, very helpful for people that are lazy in, in this sort of role. So making sure that that's ticked is really gonna be beneficial. We can click on next uh, and then we can click on save and you'll see that the update status properties have sort of changed here as well. And you can update them all of them. Uh, custom properties are custom. So you can create anything that you want and you can collect any specific information that you want. Remember that you don't want too much friction internally. You wanna make it easy for the support team to be able to deal with the support ticket so making sure that there's not a great deal of information, ask yourself what is necessary and just cut out the stuff that's unnecessary. If you're starting from scratch, try not to go too big too quickly, start small and work your way up as you gather more and more information as well. So you can uh, add more steps or more statuses to each of the stages there if you want, just click it uh, and you can name the status and if it's open or close, um, you can sort of uh, choose your own adventure uh, depending on the complexity of your support process. Cool, that's all done and dusted. Uh, another little thing that I like to play with up here is the choose the properties that are shown on the card in the pipeline view. So uh, they've kind of been 
HubSpot's been working on this uh, and it's been really great uh, in regards to the deal side of things as well as, as well as the ticket side. So what we can do is see these status properties that we've got here, if we customize the ticket cards, we can actually have up to, I think it's three, four? We can have up to four, there you go, that's awesome. So we can have up to four properties. So if we go through here, um, I'm just gonna just select any random ones. On the actual card itself, it will show four pieces of property information on that card that's known, which is awesome because in the past, it's only really been, um, it's only you've only really been able to do what it, it tells you to do. So the name and actually the, uh, the ticket name and also the date created. Here, we're able to completely customize that all together. And then that way you don't have to click on inside the ticket to actually gain that specific information. So very, very helpful. Um, I don't think any of the stuff that I've given there is helpful, but that's all good. Last but not least, this little automate tab that we've got here is a very, very, very helpful. So um, out of the box, it comes with two uh, update ticket status automations. So when the email is sent to the customer, it's gonna change the status of the ticket back to awaiting contact. And then if the customer replies, it's waiting on us. That will help you out so much, you have no idea. That way, uh, you're not having to manually move that ticket back and forth, back and forth every single time. Nine times out of 10, if you're super busy, you're gonna forget to do it. This way, you're actually able to do it automatically. The beautiful thing about it is, if you're a manager or in the C-suite and you're trying to understand how the support team is doing, it'll actually give you insights into the actual reporting on how long they're taking to, to change from deal stage to deal stage and start setting up reporting for that as well. You can go through and you can edit those actions as well. These ones will be based on the statuses that you've made in the, in the if we go over to the configure, these will be based on the actual statuses that we have there as well. Um, you can go through. Now, if you uh, wanna get a little bit more uh, detailed in regards to automation, uh, you don't necessarily just wanna move a ticket back and forth, back and forth based on reply and, and, and sending out an email. You can then go ahead and create workflows uh, in here that will go ahead and automatically whip it up inside the workflows area for you. But you might wanna say that when a new ticket comes in, you might wanna notify somebody internally, or you might want to reply back to them with an email to say, thank you, we've got your ticket, we'll be with you shortly and really improve that customer experience standpoint. Uh, everything that you make in here will copy on the workflow area inside the workflow tabs at the top and you drop down. This is just an easier place to just sort of see if you've got your ducks in a line from a visual standpoint. So that is how you do it. Well, there you have it. You now know how to customize ticket pipelines and statuses right inside HubSpot. Uh, if you're after a PDF version of what we've learned today, make sure you check out the link in the description below. And if you've learned something new in this video and you're keen to learn more about HubSpot, make sure you give us a like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you never miss another video. Well, that's it from me. Happy HubSpotting.